are. Okay, we're broadcasting. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have people joining us here. We'll give them just a minute or two to get everybody in. I see a few people commenting about meeting snacks. I wish we did have the ability to send you some virtual snacks as well. <laughs> well, I can offer some virtual, here's some virtual chewing gum. I'll show <laughs> some chewing gum back. We still have people trickling in. Okay. Yeah, I see quite a few of them coming in here. Yeah. Well, there's Mr. Bruce Haley, I noticed on online. So, so close, but yet so far, <laughs> but we live in the same county. All right. Well, I in the interest of time, I'm going to just let everybody know your video and your audio will be muted throughout the session. Um, if you do have any questions, we'll be taking questions at the end of the session and they'll be in the chat box. The chat box is not within your Zoom window. You will have to go back to the CTE website um, where you actually joined this meeting and there'll be a chat box there. So that's where, we're, where we'll take your questions from. Um, we have Mr. Stephen Gass here with the Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resource Cluster Review. Um, he'll also be doing a networking session tomorrow, or on Wednesday, excuse me. Um, so without further ado, Mr. Gass, I think we're ready for you. Well, thank you, Kristen. And uh, again, uh, welcome everyone to this new platform of doing things, uh, which is nothing new for uh, a lot of you, you've been participating in a lot of the TWAE professional developments on virtual uh, meetings this summer, and I congratulate you uh, for participating and taking advantage of those. Uh, we have a very content rich session today, a lot of changes that have been going on. And with that, uh, as uh, uh, we just mentioned a while ago, uh, we will, as uh, Christina mentioned, the chat feature, you can enter questions in on that. We're gonna to get to those toward the end. Uh, you may also wanna write those down, a sheet of paper, either one. We'll address those when we get toward the end of the session because of the time and the content that we have to cover. And we, what we don't get to today, we will follow up first thing on our networking session on Wednesday and to move along with that. So with that, uh, we'll uh, just start off with this basic slide you'll see all the time from the Department of Education, uh, just outlining the three pillars that we uh, kind of do everything on with is the uh, academics, as far as what we believe that every kid, no matter where they live, what zip code they're in, they should have access to high quality education. And I know you all have been doing that quite a bit, especially with this online and finding ways to make things happen for students. And then far as educators, going over and uh, we want to provide quality support for educators and then looking at the whole child is providing uh, both academic and non-academic supports for our students with that. So with this session today, basically four things that we're going to cover. Uh, the first part um, is basically looking at the State Board of Education changes far as courses and far as coming up this school year and revisions for this next school year in 21, 22, and then a sneak peek of actually 22-23. Uh, uh, then we're gonna provide some information on the programs and some guidance based on some trends and some things that we see uh, that we'll pull out for you. And then we're gonna identify uh, some new uh, and updated state level uh, resources for you to use that you'll have access to and then we'll spend a few minutes just going over and explaining a few things and required documentation that you'll need for quality 12 month programs, which uh, you'll hear me say again, uh, during times of budget cuts, uh, quality 12 month programs for ag comes under a lot of scrutiny. So uh, a few things 
that we want to bring out and highlight on that segment there. So with that, this is our agenda for this session. Like I said, most of our time will be spent on looking at our programs of study and our standards, and, and then uh, we're going to break down, and that's kind of the way this looks like for today. So with this, uh, like we said, we're going to be in true transparency. We're going to provide you with more information than we have in the past. And with that, uh, I want to be kind of clear, and you may want to jot some of this information down as we go through, uh, for you can enter into chat or bring tomorrow, I mean, excuse me, on Wednesday with you. But these are the changes that go in effect for this school year when we start back in fall, no matter what type of schedule that your system has, whether it's all in class or virtual or a hybrid. Uh, we went through these last year, so these are just more of an update uh, real quickly, just as a reminder. And one thing you'll notice on the Ag Ed webpage, when you go to download the course documents, one thing that you can do to make sure you've got the most up-to-date uh, course standard documents, up on the top, there'll be a little tag that says at the top, published for the 2020-21 school year. That way you will know if that's the most recent documentation, that's what uh, the core team, when they come in to do monitoring, they'll be looking for that on the standards when they monitor for documentation. So just keep that in mind. But the ones that have changes that are going in place this year uh, are the environmental natural resources and food science, as uh, far as individual courses, uh, their SAE course, and then unmanned aircraft systems in agriculture. Uh, one thing I will point out that uh, with that, we are proposing industry certification uh, for that in the part 107, and we'll talk briefly about a new process with the industry certifications, but that will come with a certification for students. Uh, so with that, we'll move right on into the changes for this year. I won't spend a lot of time on these because you can go to download these, and if you go to the CTE website where you registered for this, there are links in that for files where you can download an agenda for this session. And that session has live links in that uh, file of agenda where you can go to a lot of this stuff, but most of you know where to download your uh, standards anyway. But these are already uploaded live and ready. But environmental science, basically, uh, little changes there was basically that we made was to basically put some more emphasis on the analysis of diseases that impact plants and animals uh, with that. And then also far as looking at uh, the positive conservation practices that we use to improve environment. Like I said, these are things that we dug into more last year. Uh, and this is just kind of a reminder of that. In plant and soil sciences, there were no changes to that course, our level three course. And then the level four course, our natural resource management. We had some rewording. Uh, some of our standards there to align more to the national content standards and then also to reflect uh, some of the current environmental conservation migration issues that we have because we are a migration state for some of uh, the wildlife. So those were the changes with environmental natural resources. Then moving on to food science program of study, we had uh, a few changes in that, basically reflecting to uh, genomics uh, and we had in Murfreesboro, we had Dr. Shrek and him, they've already started doing some of that training for us and providing us background and content for genomics because that also went into the veterinary animal science and the horticulture area. So they're working on a series of professional developments for that. They started last year, they'll be back with us next year with a new series to go along with that and just had some technical updates. When you get into the level three and four courses, we started seeing more information on using blockchain trends as far as dealing with food safety and compliances as far as that type of information tracking food. And like I said, that carried on over into advanced food science, especially dealing with marketing of our products in national and international markets, uh, tracking the food and where it's processed, where it's grown, processed, and tracking all the way until it reaches that in the consumer. Mr. Uh, Gass, Yes. I apologize. I don't mean to interrupt. Um, we're not seeing your screen if you're sharing. Oh, okay. Let me <laughs> go back and let 
Let me... Okay, thanks. Are you seeing the screen now? We are, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for interrupting uh, on that. I must have not hit the button correctly. Uh, now, with that, uh, with food, with advanced food science, like I said, the international marketing and uh, is where we have all that food, advanced food science in. And then with uh, uh, supervised ag experience program, uh, let me get back now. Let's see if my slide will advance. Okay. Now with uh, our SAEs, we had uh, some changes with that, uh, basically realigning uh, our standards to match up with the new SAE for all guidelines that we have. And I will just uh, mention that uh, we do have a session on SAEs and these new standards for SAE for all uh, on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Uh, Brittany Davis and Nina Crutchfield will be presenting that. And basically, a lot of those changes were lining up with those new changes as far as uh, the foundational and marginal level of SAE. So you may want to get some more information about that in those sessions, but to realign those to meet national standards were the changes that we made with SAE, the SAE course. Uh, the next one was basically uh, unmanned aircraft systems in agriculture. A lot of you have already uh, went over and participated in some of the training that was at TAAE, and there's another session uh, starting Wednesday on this, another course as far as teachers getting certified to teach this course. Um, and with this course, it counts as a level four course or as an additional level five course uh, in the programs of study. You can see here, it's aligned to the ag engineering, applied technology, environmental natural resources, the horticulture science, and the vet and animal science uh, programs of study. Uh, those are the ones that it aligns to. It can replace again that level four course if you'd like for it to. Uh, the teacher does have to have your part 107 certification uh, for teaching that. And the way the course is broken down, the first 16 standards basically go over and cover the information for the students to earn the part 107 and then standard 17 through 24 cover uh, the agricultural applications of that. <laughs> so uh, that was a lot of information I uh, went through real quick, but that is stuff that we've already covered. Uh, and last year it was more of a refresher. And like I said, all these courses are already online. You can pull those down and look at those. And so those will be available there for you uh, to look at. And if there's any questions with that, be glad to answer some of those. Uh, but basically the only training uh, you'll need is for a teacher on this course. Uh, you got to have your uh, part 107 certification to teach this course uh, for ag. So with that, moving now to the courses that are fixing to go to State Board of Education. Uh, with these courses, these are the ones we've been reviewing the past year. With that, uh, several of you uh, received an email to provide input for that. And many of you all did send in feedback information of what instructional gaps we had, what changes need to be made, what some of the things need to be removed from these courses. Uh, we also met with our uh, individual curriculum advisory committee, met with business and industry people to get a lot of feedback. And so these changes were made from all the input that we received from you all in those groups to ag business and to agriculture engineering applied technologies. And then we also reviewed the agri-science course because of um, the Department of Ed was also reviewing all of the double dipping courses that counts for academic credit. And so it was, and we'll talk more about that later, but those are the courses and we're gonna go through these in detail. And these courses are now up online at the State Department of the Board of Education website. It's not on our website, but on the uh, State Board of Education website because they will be going for first reading in uh, the 24th of this month. So those standard changes 
or on the website until they pass second reading, which will be in November. So once they go through first reading, the 24th of this month, then they will be open for public comment. That means you can submit changes, recommendations, uh, feedback. You, your CT directors, or anybody else can provide that through an open link. Your CT director will have that. They'll be coming out in their information. I've got a link on, um, there'll be a link coming out on that that we'll provide for you all through the CT director's information where you can provide that. So please do on that. Once we get all that feedback in for a 45 day period, is that window will be open and then we can make uh, those final changes to go back to the board. Now, I remind you, these will be going in for the starting the 21, 22 school year. So that will be next school year. And so we'll take a look at these individually. Here are the ones, and I know I'm gonna be going kind of fast on these uh, because of the time frame that we have to operate in today. Uh, and that's why we do have the networking session that we can provide more clarification if we run out of time today. But here on the agribusiness or level two course, uh, one of the things that uh, from all parties come in, like I said, the ag teachers, the advisory council, business and industry, uh, one of the things they said it was not representative here was that we needed to change the name of this course to include farm where the proposed name is Principles of Farm and Agribusiness. So that is one thing that uh, kind of takes encompasses more of what we're actually preparing uh, the students for and lines it more to post-secondary and uh, occupations that the students would go into. Uh, another thing that was more holistic, and uh, you can see these changes, like I said, if you download it from the State Board of Education website, is that uh, start introducing supply chain management. Uh, we mentioned about some of the uh, blockchain in far as food science, but supply chain management as related to agriculture is more prevalent now and becoming more of an issue and something that the students uh, need to be aware of that we had an instructional gap for. Another gap area that was uh, brought out was to increase uh, some management analysis concepts, especially SWAT management, looking at our strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats, as far as looking at whether something is worth doing, whether a new concept or new uh, enterprise is worth doing. This is the, the way that ag business looks at any type of enterprise. So start looking at those uh, opportunities that we have there. Uh, Another thing was, and you'll see this throughout all of our programs now, one thing we're hearing a lot from industry is increase the use of spreadsheet, uh, the knowledge of use of spreadsheet in students. Uh, they're looking more at, uh, in the industry, they look more at Excel education, they look more at Google Sheets. Uh, with that, the main thing is, is looking at platforms, looking at uh, actually how to build a formula, how to do conditional formatting, changing some of the, those different functions. So we have started to integrate those, how to use and function uh, in ag business. And so we've integrated that and building on that throughout, as you'll see here in a few minutes, uh, throughout the program of study. And then also integrating some digital marketing concepts. Uh, that's one thing we were teaching, but we didn't have really listed in the standards. So now we will have those listed into our standards more so. So you can start using some of the digital marketing concepts, technology and stuff. Some of the schools were having issue with digital technology using uh, some social media stuff with that. I will note here, as you see in the slide, uh, as far as the Tennessee Secondary Teacher Agribusiness Academy, some of, a lot of you all have signed up for that, have been accepting that UT got the grant from USDA and are participating in that to develop uh, resources, uh, materials, and training and stuff for ag business. If you're interested in that, you can attend that session. So we will be developing materials, resources to go along with these new standards in ag businesses that encompass these changes. So we're already in the process of providing professional development training and resources. And I'm very excited about that and about this grant. Uh, 
to go along with uh, the, our third level course, uh, kind of goes on with what we have talked about already. Uh, some of the changes we had here was some clarifying content to clean it up and to add some additional focus on post-secondary opportunities that our students were actually going into. Uh, that's one thing a lot of uh, teachers mentioned that uh, we wouldn't really get the surface there. It's always doing is hitting the surface. We need to expand that out uh, to provide those uh, opportunities a lot more. So we've done that. And then also we've expanded it out to include that social media and communications, uh, looking at uh, those things because that's where it's kind of housed with that social media. How do we do that properly? So uh, we've got some social media standards now included in with that. Uh, in level four course, uh, this one is that uh, we're looking at, as far as some more content there, we're looking at those opportunities of what the kids are going into. We're increasing some of the spreadsheet use. Here we're looking at more at some of the management of spreadsheets, doing some analysis, taking it up a notch before. It's more than just uh, learning how to build a formula, but it's looking how to do some of those analysis to determine whether the profit or loss on something would work. Then uh, another thing that's kind of holistic is that looking at using platforms. You heard me mention that term earlier, but with that, a lot of things are cloud-based now, a lot of the programs. And one of the things that all these programs are different, but one of the things that they're looking at is helping students be exposed to different types of online programs. Farm Credit has programs online that you can access. Uh, Farm Bureau has programs. Other places have programs. It's not just going to a certain program, but going to these different uh, programs that have financial programs and learning how to operate these different programs. Uh, and we see this also with in precision agriculture, there's different platforms and just getting students used to using different types of platforms in these cloud-based tools. And uh, of course in ag business, it's looking more at the financial platforms with that. So uh, that's kind of encompassing the changes in ag business. Uh, they're, they sound like there's a lot, but when you really get looking at those standards, comparing them, it, they're not that many, there's just a few in there. Uh, the one that's probably had more changes that's gonna be uh, bringing in line is our Ag Engineering and Technologies programs and study. Uh, with this, uh, we heard loud and clear from a lot of teachers that went over and and also post-secondary that we needed to have a name change of this to be more reflective of what we were training our students to go into because of what we were teaching, the name was not, was kind of outdated. And it's not uh, to be more reflective of what we're actually teaching is uh, we need to change the name, the name that was settled amongst the input that we were receiving, uh, the name's gonna be changed uh, to agriculture engineering, industrial and mechanical systems. <laughs> and that's because of the technology and stuff that we're teaching where our kids are going to work. Uh, it's gonna provide them better uh, alignment to post-secondary, uh, especially with TCATs and where our kids are going to work. And so it's gonna provide that better concentration there. Um, so with that, uh, when we get moving to looking at changes, proposed changes to the ag, uh, principles of Ag Mechanics or Level 2 courses. Uh, a lot of teachers gave us feedback on this one. And so in standards three, four, and five, we increased a lot of the measurement, mathematical, and mechanical advantage concepts to help align to uh, the precision management uh, certification. And with that, uh, and also with the precision agricultural uh, stuff that we use and those standards to help prepare them for that. That's where uh, instructional gap was identified. And so we increased some of those standards uh, a little bit more. The other thing which is probably new and is gonna be more of a, a change for us, but we are already working on some uh, professional development on that is the introduction of generator technology. One of the things that our advisory council really mentioned to us about that we do a great job with teaching students on how to uh, rebuild, troubleshoot small gasoline engines and run them. And they know a little bit about DC 
the difference of DC and AC uh, currents, but we need to get more into using DC uh, electricity and understand how that operates because, uh, and using generator technology, because a lot of the larger equipment, a lot of our big tractors and equipment, uh, they said in about 10 years, you won't see a diesel engine on a, uh, a bulldozer and a lot of the heavy equipment. And we already see that in some of these now uh, road tractors. Uh, you're seeing them now with electrical engines driving them instead of diesel engines. So uh, staying on the cutting edge of that, we're starting to see the shift in our farm equipment and a lot of other things and going toward that generator technology. Even in with uh, precision agriculture, we're seeing more electrical driven components. So with that, we've got a lot of things there to look at. Uh, so we're gonna start introducing that technology uh, gradually. We're not expecting them to be a generator repair station. That's not what we're looking at. We're just introducing some of that to get them to understand that. And we'll have more information coming out later on that. Uh, the ag power and equipment, uh, we're getting more and introducing more of the precision agriculture. We had waited till that last uh, our level four course, we're kind of moving some of that down into ag power and equipment, dealing with uh, using some of the sensor technology, how to put that on and, and dealing with some of that precision technology. Uh, we kind of just move that down to the third course. In, ag, in our fourth level course, we've got a name change with that. Uh, was recommended also to include fabrication because we do a lot of fabrication and that was uh, a hindrance to a lot of students moving on to post-secondary in a lot of ways, uh, what teachers were telling us and recommending. So we put the fabrication in there to better align it to what we're actually preparing students for uh, with that. And uh, then also we looked at the precision instrument technology. Uh, how do you use some of that different technology, the instrumentation, those platforms? Uh, so we made some adjustments there with that one. So that's the changes and it's a lot of, to comprehend I would encourage you to pull down those standards from the state board website and look at those, compare those to get a good breast of what those changes really look like. Um, so with that, uh, we're gonna move to agri-science. Uh, I know there's some rumors out there from the CT directors meeting when they heard a lot of these changes. Uh, there are massive changes, a lot of changes made to agri-science in the fact that every standard was touched and that was because we had to realign to the new science standards. And one thing I like about this, and when you look at those standards, uh, I think you will start seeing some things that will be exciting. Uh, there's a lot of terminology that's new, that's uh, different from what we're used to seeing, but the whole concept of this uh, and the way science is looking at this, they're moving away from the scientific method that they've used for years in doing a hypothesis more to a problem solving method of the way we actually operate in ag. They're looking now at, okay, here's the problem. How do I fix it? Well, let's try this. If this works, great. If it doesn't work, what do I need to change to make it work? So it's more of a problem solving uh, aspect and more of the way we teach. So I'm really excited about this and the science people are already looking at combining and joining with us to provide some professional development and understanding some of their new terminology that they're using with that. So we can still bridge that gap and provide that science, retain that science credit that uh, we've had for all these years. So keep an open mind when you look at that, just re remember there's new terminologies, new definitions to terms uh, and words in that and we're gonna make those clarifications for you on that. Now, moving, like I said, on to another year. Uh, this is actually for the 22-23 school year. This is out quite a few years. Uh, we are starting the review process. Used to, it was every uh, five, I mean, every seven years, we would review all of our courses. And that was a pretty tough change for everybody. Now we revise our courses, two programs of study every three years. So this, we're in the process now of starting to revise the horticulture and veterinary animal science programs of study. Uh, these revisions that we're starting this year will not take 
effect until the 22-23 school year. We're looking at two years out, and this is just the way the process goes. So one of the things we're doing, and I'm very excited about this, we're able to get more teacher input on the front end quicker than we have in a long, long time. And that starts this week. And as you see here, here's our two networking sessions that we have to provide opportunities for you to provide input on these programs of study. If you have not signed up for these session, networking sessions, I would recommend uh, that you do. These are open mic where we can talk, uh, you provide input, there's a list of questions, guiding questions that you can download from the site that we'll be using, kind of go through so we can improve and get your input on these two programs of study. So with that, uh, you've got the programs that's going to affect this year. You've got the one that's going to the state board that you're going to be able to provide additional input in after. Uh, I believe they're going to open the open comment on the 27th of this month. And you've got 45 days to provide additional input that we can make some changes to these standards. Uh, and now you see what we're getting ready to start working on, on horticulture and venereal animal science. This is the first time that we've been able to provide this much information at one time and for teachers to have this much input on the direction of our standards in many, many years. So I'm very excited about that. So uh, with that, uh, that puts us back now to our agenda. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, programs, some information specifically focusing on two things, teacher pesticide certification and industry certifications for our students real quick. Uh, with this, I will spend just a little bit of time here with, uh, and you can read over the content in this uh, slide as I'm talking here, but I do want to remind you state law uh, requires that if you've got a high school greenhouse and you're using it for education, you as the teacher, not as one of the teachers, but you as a teacher, if you use that greenhouse for instruction, you're supposed to have your commercial applicator certification, or we abbreviate as your C10 certification. You're supposed to have that. Uh, even if you're the uh, ag mechanics teacher and you're teaching, let's say, agri-science also, because the uh, horticulture teacher's not able to do it this time, if you're taking your students out into the greenhouse, for experiments or to uh, for something like that, you still have to have your C10 certification. And what really comes down to, you see here, and it's by law, I mean, we supervise the use of, and especially down at the very bottom in the category, that's where we fall in as teachers under the demonstration research and regulatory pest control. Uh, that's where we fall in, and that goes for general or restrictive use. So this is basically taking over the counter, any type of chemical, pesticide, restrictive use type of stuff you're supposed to have because the thing is when they come in, as far as the day, the Department of Agriculture comes in to inspect a greenhouse, they're gonna be looking for that teacher's certification that's in the greenhouse with them at that time. And so you need to have that and so we submit those every year from the Department of Education, but here is a breakdown. Uh, I just sent in those records uh, here a few weeks ago, and here's a breakdown of the percentage of the, from those teachers that teach in these courses. Uh, you can see the breakdown that only 80, 48% of our ag science teachers have it. Uh, you break on down, and here's what's alarming greenhouse management, only 64% of our teachers have that certification. That should be uh, right at 100% really in all of these, we should be. So we've got some work to do uh, to get those numbers up and to make sure that uh, you're in compliance if they come in and check you because we don't want you to be getting those fines. Uh, and they can actually shut your greenhouse down uh, if you're not in compliance. So one of the things that we do want to do uh, is to make sure that you know that you're responsible to take these exams and you're supposed to be responsible for earning 18 points uh, during a three-year certification cycle. Uh, the good side is once you've got your test, uh, if you're teaching these courses, these list of courses, and the these courses are listed also in the attached files 
that are attached on the, uh, the side here. Uh, but you'll get 14 points for each one of those, and we submit those in each year. So once you've taken that test, and long you're teaching this, these courses, you're going to get your points. And so you're going to be okay, but you've got to get your, your points with that. Now, as far as to get certified, if you're not certified, and we've got a lot of teachers coming through that are not uh, because of various reasons, but you can go to the University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture Pesticide Safety Program. You can Google that or use this link, either one, and go to that, and you can pull down information for our study guides, uh, studying for the test. Uh, the test is actually administered through the Department of Agriculture. They have an online pesticide program link there that you can do and all that's listed links for all this is on the agenda that you can download from this session document and so you can go through that let them know that you're an ag teacher they may give you a discount or something on that when you're taking the test sometimes they give us breaks with that so i just wanted to make sure that you knew about that uh, and i know that the department of ag does not have enough staff to inspect every greenhouse every year. But the main thing is, if something happens, that's when it really becomes important. And we don't want you to get uh, in a tough spot over that. Uh, next thing I do want to mention as far as industry certifications for our students, we do have a new process. We've been reviewing that. Uh, Department of Agriculture, Department of Labor, uh, higher education has been involved with that uh, as far as getting on the promoted list uh, that new vetting process began july 15th goes through the 24th uh, check with your ct director they have uh, information on that a link's been provided to them to where you can go on and submit those for industry certifications for any career cluster on that and so that's probably going to open up more certifications for us in our different uh, areas uh, and that list should be uh, released for uh, in this October. I will say that every certification that's on the list right now will remain on the list this year, but they all will be reviewed and then um, this year, but they will remain on this year for one year. Uh, I think we're good. I think everything that we have on the list so far uh, meets the criteria and will be staying on the list. So we won't have any of those certifications coming off that impact act. I only see new ones coming on. So make sure that uh, you get with your CT director about submitting those uh, certifications. Uh, those of you all that offer TSIC, this and we're supposed to give it this spring that we're not able to because of the pandemic, you should be receiving, and already see this information, but you'll be receiving some more information these were the extended dates. Just wanted to remind those of you that uh, need to get with your testing coordinator and see about getting these exams scheduled and letting us know. So we will be glad to work with you to get those scheduled, even for those seniors that have graduated, still have the opportunity to come back and take the TSIC exam where they can get college credit and industry certification. Another thing that we're excited about, the TSIC now has a website where you can download a lot of the resources and information that's received during training. A lot of teachers that uh, went through training said this would be good for anybody to have, all teachers to have, even if you were not given the TSIC exam. So we have provided a lot of that resources <coughs> and the study guides on there. So uh, just wanna let you know that that's available when you go to the CTE website. It's on the left-hand side down at the bottom of those links. So uh, you can uh, find those there. We just wanna let you know about that. Uh, that takes us through, uh, moves us now to our state level resources. And with that, uh, just wanted to remind you, we've got some, been updating a lot of our resources on the Ag homepage. If you scroll down to the, down to the bottom in the middle of our uh, homepage, You'll see a program of study where you download everything. I'd already mentioned about those new courses with the TAC on there as far as uh, this current school year. Uh, the program of study justifications, uh, they're being updated uh, by program of study now. So you'll see some changes there. Uh, as far as the equipment list, 
Uh, they have been updated on that. Uh, if you there's a link we've updated those by program of study and by course, so it's more specific than what it had been. Uh, course standards we've updated those. That includes some links for online instruction. So I would uh, go back and look at those if you hadn't seen those a while. And the uh, marketing materials uh, those should be up sometime this week. Uh, they've uh, been updated to reflect the new programs of study that's just been updated. The old ones are still there where you can use and put your name on. And then the industry certifications, once we have the new ones updated, you will have new uh, uh, industry certifications there that's available to you. Another uh, resource is the Department of Agriculture. Uh, they have a lot of stuff on there. One of the things is the online pesticide system. That's where you can get a lot of information there. I will say the Ag Forestry Directory that they have, they have a lot of our industry partners listed on that uh, directory with their website link. And a lot of those partners have educational resource materials on there. If nothing else on that list from the Department of Agriculture, that directory has an abundance worth of resource materials there. So I would check them out also. Uh, so with that, moving on to our, our 12 month requirements, uh, I will say this, and I said uh, you need to download the manual off of the web page, the Ag Ed web page, because the manual has a lot of the criteria, final report templates that's in there. It lists the law, and you'll find all that, and it outlines the documentation that you have to have as uh, far as review, the monitoring process that's got to be part of all of that that you have to have documented. And one thing that I would say with uh, the law, once, once it's the ag program has been 12 month program, it can't go back. So there's certain criteria steps you have. Uh, here are some best practices tips that you need to do. And we could talk, I could talk hours on this stuff, but the main thing is that you need to work with your CT director and plan all your activities out. Make sure that you're filling out all required reports. Some school systems have their own special reports they have to fill out. So check with your CT director on that and whatever deadline. Keep them informed, invite them for some of the uh, SAE visits. Even if they're online and Zoom, uh, invite them to drop in on some of those with you. Uh, but keep a journal of stuff, even digital portfolios of some of the different things you do. Uh, record some of your Zoom meetings if you're having them with your students. If you have a AET subscription, use the mobile app, have your students use that mobile app, help document that. I know some systems use AET to document all their 12 month visits and stuff. So however you work, the main thing is document. Document what you're doing so you can show and justify why it's important to have 12 month to work with these students because your SAE is what makes us different from everyone else. And so that is uh, why we have our 12 month. If we didn't have SAE, we would not, the 12 month legislation would not have passed years ago. So with that, a uh, few things in closing. Uh, real quickly, we went through our objectives here, as far as covering the state board courses, approval, what's being revised. We've hit some program information uh, with some guidance and trends where we talked about as far as uh, certificate or industry certifications, teacher certification of pesticides, uh, looked at some resources where we've updated those real quick, and then uh, looked over some 12 month program. So with that, uh, actually it gives us just, a, uh, I think a few minutes, just a couple minutes here for some questions on that. So uh, Christina, Yes, do sir. We have some questions in the chat. We do have a few. Um, Robin was just asking if you could reshare the certification slide so she could take a picture of it. Uh, the uh, with the as far as the courses that do the certification. I believe so. Yes. Those are on a file. If you go back to where you signed in for this session, if you go to the file that's associated there is a list of all of those courses there where you can download perfect uh, the next question was um, we have a stem k4 teacher is the greenhouse certification something i can do as well i teach all the career clusters as an intro and we have hydroponics 
oh, and I lost it. And in the future, we will have a greenhouse. Yes, yes. It's not, uh, yes, I would highly encourage if you're teaching a greenhouse to have that because if the Department of Ag comes by and sees a greenhouse, they're going to want to check for what chemical records, where what certifications, who's in there. Uh, yes, they can go to the same website, pull down the same information. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question is, how long does the CAT-10 certification last? Uh, you have to have earn uh, 18 points in a three-year period to renew it. So it's good for three years, but it's got to be renewed every three years. And so as long as you keep it renewed, it stays active. Next question was, if you could possibly show the first uh, few slides about the AFNR changes that weren't showing when you started the screen sharing. Uh, yes, and I'll go back to those real quick. Here, those are basically the changes that we had had and went over last year. Uh, and it was basically about environmental natural resources and food science. Um, and I'll click through these. Uh, next question. Um, that, were, that is all the questions I see. And before we end, I just wanted to make sure everyone had the keyword for this session, which is New Jersey. And could you give them the... Uh, code? Do you have the code for this session? Um, they shouldn't need a code. It should automatically pre-fill for them. Okay. Yep, and then the, the, we did have another question come up. This, this session is recorded. Um, they'll be available in the on-demand sessions tab closer to the end of the day, so everything will be recorded if you need to re-watch this session. And I'm not seeing any more come through. Okay. And then I do want to remind everyone, and I'll take this back to the end slide. Uh, the slides before those that I just showed were basically uh, just agendas and time frames and objectives uh, prior to that. And so, uh, Just remind everyone, we do have a networking session uh, Wednesday at 8.30 that uh, is an open network session to ask additional questions or clarifications uh, about that. Uh, we do have uh, uh, some other things that we did not cover in here. Uh, I'm sure uh, some good, interesting points and things of discussion and questions that you may have clarifications uh, I'll be glad to talk with you about so it's uh, just some open time to continue on any discussions from content from here or any other burning issues and so with that uh, I think we are uh, time to close if there's no other questions uh, one more question did come through. Um, they were asking about the next teacher drone class and when that will be held. Uh, the next teacher drone class is on Wednesday at 830. I mean, uh, let me just double check to make sure. Hold on just a second. Uh, Yes, it is Wednesday, it is, uh, Wednesday the 22nd, starting at 8.30. Uh, Jason DeKoff is the presenter. He'll be covering that. So. Any other questions? It looks like that was it. Okay, well, thank you very much. You all have a, a great year, a safe year. And we will see you 
either in one of the opportunities or in our networking session. Have a great day. Thank you.